Welcome to NAB 2023. We're at DJI, where seven years later, we finally have the Inspire 3. Check it out. DIY Photography's coverage of NAB 2023 is sponsored by Sennheiser, Jiayun, Small Rig, and B&H. Hey guys, we're back with Ferdinand Wolf, Creative Director for DJI Europe. And please tell us more about the Inspire 3. Okay, yeah, we're super thrilled to showcase the new Inspire 3 here. There's actually a lot of updates and upgrades. Uh, we try to walk you through the most um, significant one. Um, maybe we can start the aircraft body. It might look like the iconic Inspire shape, but under the hood, there's a lot of things that changed. Uh, for instance, we changed the transformation mechanism. So now the lower landing gear position that on previous generations basically only served for taking off and landing now has a new function called tilt boost. So what it does in the lower position, it has like a V shape if you look from, from the top. So you have a wider stance in the front and it also lifts the aircraft nose up. So what that does is you have a better camera clearance and you can actually look up 80 degrees while still be able to look down. So you can transform your angle from down to upwards or vice versa. And, and why is that important to be able to look up? Well, sometimes you need to film the you know, architecture, you want to have the camera facing up or like fly through a forest and want to look you know, from down up into the trees. Um, so on other drones, you know, previously you had to top mount the camera um, or bottom mount it. So you had to choose. And then you had, you're limited of... Exactly. If you top mounted the camera, you could look up and maybe straight, but not down anymore. If you bottom mounted it, you could look down and straight, but the upward tilt was uh, limited. Here you can actually go from down to up and vice versa and you don't have to remount the gimbal, which is actually pretty nice. Um, also you have a better uh, lens and camera clearance when landing because the aircraft nose is up, so you, know, you don't scratch your lens anymore. And if you go to the um, flying mode basically to the up, uh, upper landing gear position, you can see that it now transfers to like an H shape, so the arms are parallel and you have a steeper angle. 15 degrees more than on i2, uh, which also improves the camera clearance, so you won't see the landing gear lags as much anymore. And that helps also when you're accelerating or braking? Um, so if you have it down, uh, the wider stance improves the efficiency and the top speed. So this could, that's why we call it tilt boost, it basically also accelerates, it boosts the top speed of the aircraft. So both both positions have their purposes and, and features, right? Very cool. And are these the same batteries we have on the i2? They look similar, but this is the updated version. It's a TB51, new chemistry, higher voltage. So they have uh, better power output in high temperatures and low temperatures. Um, but they're still under 100 watts. So that's really important because you can still travel with the i3 on board of an aircraft. So you can take the batteries in the hand luggage. That's very essential. And you know, on heavy lifter drones, that's always you know, a big hassle that you have to ship your batteries. With Inspire 3, you can just take them on board of an aircraft. Very cool. The, the camera looks a little bit bigger, is that right? Right. So we upgrade the camera from a Super 35 X7 to the full frame X9 Air, which also boosts 8.1K resolution up to 75 frames. So this is a big upgrade. It's a purposely designed sensor for this, so we're not reusing any other sensor on the market. This is purposely designed for DJI. It has up to 14.7 stops of dynamic range, so it actually matches with the high-end cinema-grade cameras, which is very important because ultimately on an all-integrated drone, um, the camera quality decides if the drone is accepted on a set or not, right? So with this, you don't have to worry, it meets the high industry standards. So I imagine it also shoots Cinema DNG. Exactly. We have all the professional codecs like Cinema DNG. Uh, we have ProRes 422. We have ProRes RAW and also H.265. Yeah. It, and what about media? Did we change the media? Yes. So now, because of the higher data rates, uh, we're reusing um, the media from the Ronin 4D. So it's basically uh, the same media. So on set, you can also swap the media between the Ronin 4D and the Inspire 3, which is really nice. It's a one terabyte SSD, and the coolest trick, you don't need a reader. So it has USB-C, so if you hand it out to the DIT or the Data Wrangler, you don't have to provide a reader anymore. 
Just a cable and you have yes, it. Exactly. So if it's the end of the day, you know, and you didn't have the time to copy the footage anymore, you just hand them the card and they can send it back after copying. You don't have to give out your reader anymore. No more excuses. Exactly. So this is a big upgrade because I had that often that, you know, you had to give away your reader and then on the next set you didn't have the reader anymore. I also see we reposition the FPV cam. Exactly. So in general, we try to integrate all the components into the aircraft body to make it more streamlined, aerodynamic, and efficient as well. Um, and one of the big upgrades is also the FPV camera in general. Now we're using a larger sensor, which is way better in low light. So you can basically fly at night, which makes it very safe to navigate. It has double the FOV of the i2. So we're talking about 160 degrees now, 161 to be precise. This is basically the FOV, typical FOV uh, drones have. So you actually can fly the inspired 3 FOV style, which is really, really cool. And you still, you know, can um, control the angle of the FOV camera, which is very helpful. But it's still stabilized on the tilt axis. Very helpful. Um, and we also... Does it also have like digital stabilization if no, you're... No, we removed that because actually that's counterproductive. If you want to navigate using the FEV camera, it's good that you actually feel the aircraft roll. Yeah, that was actually a thing we learned from I2 and removed. So basically here you only have the, the tilt stabilization, but that's, that's the way it should be. Yeah. Very um, cool. And another good thing is we're using a lower latency connection. Uh, which also helps when you try or when you fly FPV. In general, the image transmission is also a huge upgrade. We're using our latest technology called O3 Pro, which finally enables the pilot and the camera operator to stand in separate places. Before, you always had to stand very close to each other because there was a connection between the pilot remote and the gimbal operator remote. Now you have a separate downlink from O3 Pro um, and your pilot could stand here and your gimbal operator could stand at the end of the hall. And they get the same latency. Exactly. They have a separate individual link which makes it very easy and convenient to work together on the set because sometimes the pilot has to move around to have like a clear line of sight of the drone and the gimbal operator has to stand right next to the DP or director or something like that. One more thing that I see is slightly different as someone who's used the I2 yeah. quite a lot. The feet look a little more rugged. Exactly. So um, we learned from the i2 that a lot of people have to hand catch and hand start the drone sometimes. Um, on the i2, the feet were a bit, you know, brittle. So we upgraded them now. They're really robust. So it's easy to hand catch and hand launch them. Um, and also just helps in a rough landing. So this is something where I personally was really voting for, yeah. So I see also, that now that we touched on the legs, I see now the little cameras, right. and now I notice there's no other sensors. Exactly, so we also integrated the obstacle sensing cameras into the aircraft body, so there's no external bracket like on the i2. And the cool thing is we have an omnidirectional 360 degree obstacle avoidance, top, bottom, and all the way around. So you can either have the aircraft automatically stop or bypass objects, or most professionals, they prefer to have full control. You can customize your obstacle sensing. So you have a visual and audio um, warnings, and you can set them up like on your car park assistant. So if you go close to something, it will beep and it will show like a, a visual warning, and that's super helpful. Like imagine you have to back up somewhere for a shot, um, and have to fly close to a wall. So now you have a visual and audio warning if you get too close to the wall. Yeah. Although you, you know, have the cameras facing to the front, you still basically have eyes in the back, right? Yeah. Really helpful. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been DGI and Ferdinand Wolf, who's told us everything we need to know. Stay tuned for our more coverage of our NAB 2023 interviews. I'm Adam Frimmer from DIY Photography, and we'll keep you guys posted.